Paradise Now Church, 15th of the 11th, 2020. Sunday meet and rejoicing of course. I always rejoice when I see a new face and uh, let's put our hand together for Sister Caroline. Galilee Lamb, always good to see, isn't it? That the Lord provides a food place in the spiritual, no matter where we move from. No matter where we go, the Lord will provide somewhere, a pasture to dine in. Amen? We're going to dine at the Master's table again today. So it certainly does look like the Lord is near. It's very clear the Lord is near. Devastating floods and landslides, crippling Central America, tropical depression, ETA, 1,000 dead already, and thousands have lost their homes and are troubled. Uh, We look over the other side, we see the USA, Donald Trump, he may have to be escorted from the White House. We got protests, killings in uh, Basra in the east and we got 60,000 fresh cases of coronavirus in France. We got a pastor in America saying he's had a prophetic dream, I call it a prophetic dream, uh, that Donald Trump wins the election. And then on the other hand, we have a political editor by the name of Chris uh, Ullman from Australia and he said that Trump was a toxin that is about to be flushed and that he has Buckley's chance of staying in the White House and that he's an extreme narcissist. I I like the way uh, Chris uh, Ullman, I like the way the man presents himself and the sober way he speaks. He speaks in a strong way, unlike many politicians today, very weak. But he is uh, an Australian uh, political editor. This is what's going on around us. Um, There's all kinds of battles going on with the religions. The devil wanting to bring everyone together as one, ready for the one world church. Inauguration. (laughs) We have nothing to do with that. Uh, As it says in Hebrews 13, 13, that's where we are today. As As a fellowship, we are outside the gate. Without the camp, suffering the reproach of Christ. When you stand up, you're going to get fired at. And when you come out from among them, you're going to suffer persecution and the Lord Jesus said we're not only called to believe but to suffer for his name's sake and everybody said and amen and amen so uh, so many people um, are dying in the US from coronavirus that the hospitals can't cope so what they're doing is they're bringing in semi-trailer freezer containers to put the dead in. I mean, just think about that alone. You know, it's a bit of ethnic cleansing going on there. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, semi trailer freezer containers with dead bodies. Um, the Lord is near, as His Word is near, and His Word is here. And we thank the Lord today. The Lord Jesus for being amongst us. 
Where two or more are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. Let's give a hand for Pastor Jesus. Come on now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. He's the senior pastor here at Paradise Now Church. <laughs> pastor Jesus. Oh, not Pastor Biscuits, but Pastor Jesus. <laughs> Pass the Krispy Kremes. No, pass the Jesus will do me. You can keep your Krispy Kremes. Hey? Over in Oregon in the US, they're decriminalising hard drugs. Another brainwave of men and women. They're decriminalising hard drugs. You know, Proverbs 14, 12 says, The ways of men and women seem right in their own mind. The ways of men and women seem right in their own mind. But the way thereof is death and destruction. This is the way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. The road map for you, the road map for life, the road map to heaven is all in the one book. And we are the people of the book. Hallelujah. Amen. We're the people of the Lord. And so they're going to decriminalise hard drugs such as heroin, cocaine and ice in the name of expanding the health system. (laughs) I mean, it's bizarre. It's bizarre, isn't it? The the way that degenerated, unsaved men and women think. At the end of the day, all their thinking comes to this. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to sort it. But the Lord says, no, you're not going to do it. And you're not going to sort it. Because I've already done it. And I've already sorted it at the cross. And everyone said, and amen. You see, I'm purely... I'm purely and solely, S-O-L-E-L-Y, driven by the love of God and love for God. That's what drives me. It's not big money collections. That's not what drives me. It gets me out of bed to go to the street for the last 33 years. And tell people about Jesus. Popularity don't drive me either. My love for Jesus and his love for me. Mixed together, you got dunamis power. Hallelujah. (laughs) You got dunamis power. Holy Ghost power. Amen. Moving right along. What have we got here? What have we got to finish off with? We're just about done. So let's turn in our Bibles today to the message that the Lord has given me today in the writings of Psalms. Psalms, Psalm 1, Psalm 1. Hallelujah! Speaking with other tongues. Casting out demonic forces. Eating McDonald's and walking on. Drinking and eating poison and walking on. Amen. (laughs) Psalm 1, I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. Oh, hallelujah. We don't want to get this wrong thinking we are to be religious and doing white knuckle study because We might just end up getting proud. The Lord don't want that. But we meditate day and night. 
That's an impossibility, especially in the times we're living. Because everyone's got something to do in the day. Everyone's got things to do at night. But what it's saying is, we're walking with him day and night in our minds, in our hearts, in our ways, in everyone's certain. <laughs> so we are in the 49th battalion. No, we're in the 49th. Part of our series, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. And we've come a long way, that's for sure, where, where we've moved down <coughs> after 49 weeks to the word humility, which is in the fear of the T-H-E, the H is for humility. And then we went through and deconstructed the word humility till we got to the Y, the last letter in humility. And we said that was, if we love God and fear God, we will yield, yield to Him. We will yield to the Lord. We will say yes to him. We will uh, embrace. We will invite. We will love. And we will today delight. That's our last letter in the word. We're deconstructing in the fear of the Lord. The D which is delight, which we find in Psalm 1, verse 2. But he delights. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. You see that? This is not just an afternoon delight, is it? This is an ongoing day and night, night and day, I love to be in love this way. It hurts to be in love. Hey, come on. It hurts to be in love when the only one you love is Jesus Christ, I tell you. Thorns come with all the roses. There's a rose in every thorn, isn't there? With every rose, there's a thorn. And there's also one with the rose of Sharon, Jesus. There's going to be thorns. There's going to be times where you think, Lord, when will this end? But the Lord's saying, make sure you delight yourself. Be like Paul the Apostle and rejoice in your tribulations. Rejoice. In the troubled times. Because when you are weak, then you are strong. Because you're not in control. When you are weak, He is Lord. Amen? Amen. That's what the Lord wants, to be Lord. He don't want to be subservient to any human. He doesn't want to be and He never will be. Subservient. He is Lord. Jesus is Lord. So today we're going to look at delight. That's just the title, delight. We're going to deconstruct that word, delight. Hey? If we, if we love and fear the Lord, if we respect the Lord, we'll delight ourselves in the Lord. We'll delight ourselves in His way. Otherwise, it's going to be hard yards. It's going to be, oh, I don't really want to do this. It's because you don't love the Lord. It's the issue with sin again. There's certain sin in people's lives and they love that sin more than the Lord. So it's a battle. It's a struggle. To let go of it. 
And they try everything under the sun to try and get rid of that sin in their own strength. At the same time, hang on to it. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> it doesn't even make spiritual sense. It doesn't make common sense. Amen. Amen. So we have to delight. When we delight ourselves in the Lord, we delight ourselves in the way of the Lord and the law of the Lord. The Lord says, do this, do that. And we delight in that because we know it's good for us. Amen. Amen. We know it's going to be good. We know it's going to be a Romans 8, 28. We know that everything's going to work to good for them who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. But you've got to love the Lord. It's not just going to work to good for you because you're you. Who do you think you are? Repent, you ugly thing. And be saved. <laughs> it's going to work to those who love. Those who respect, those who cherish, those who yield, those who submit and subject themselves to the Lord. No matter how bad the taste is in the mouth. So what I want to do now, I just want to have intermission break. A Holy Ghost broke. And I want to let you in on a prophecy that the Lord gave me for 2021. The Lord spoke to me on the 12th of the 11th, 2020. And this is a prophecy uh, which was three days ago. The Lord spoke to me, spoke to me. And he said to me, this is how it's going to be in 21. He said, 21 will be your year of fun. And that sounds a little bit crazy, doesn't it? Because it is. Especially in the climate we're in. But the, the world's economy is not the Lord's economy. God is above and we are below. His ways are not our ways. Amen? Amen. So, um, the Lord said to me, to go to the writings and we can open up our, our Bibles for the scripture relating to this prophecy that the Lord gave me. Luke 10, hallelujah, Luke 10. 21, 2021, the year of fun. Welcome to the house of fun. Welcome to the lion lamb. Luke 10 in the verses 17. Then the 70 returned with joy. They were having fun, weren't they? They returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to tramp along serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. What do you think of that? Hey, there's a lot there in this prophecy. 21, the year of fun. The disciples of Jesus came back they were having such fun. They were jumping up and down and saying, let the spirits are subject to us. Man alive. Hey? And then on top of it, we got the Lord saying that he's seen Satan fall. 
knocked flat on his face. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Amen. Amen. So we got that to rejoice in. Also, this I started reading this, I, I was having fun, I tell you. We got so much in this prophecy. The verse 19, Behold, I give you authority. Then we got the authority, it's given to us as the disciples of Christ. We have the authority in verse 19. Trample on serpents, on devils and scorpions and over all the, all, over all the power of the enemy. And nothing. Oh, look, we got people whinging everywhere in churches today. Oh, the devil's doing this and the devil's doing that. And, and, and the demons, you know, demon possessed or Christians with demons, blah, blah, blah. After you read that, it's a joke, isn't it? He's giving the disciples authority over all the power. All the power. Come on, 21's the year of fun. Trample on serpent scorpion over all the power of the enemy. No matter whether, what form your enemy comes in, a woman or a man or, or, or the temptation of stealing or lying, we have power over that now. We have the Holy Ghost. Amen? 21, the year of fun. But I tell you what, it's not going to be fun for the world... 21 is going to be the year of difficulty. This is the contrary way of the saved and the unsaved and the faithful and the unfaithful. As we see in Psalm 1. We see the godly in Psalm 1 and we see the ungodly. And it is not so. It is not so. If we go to Psalm 1, and let's read Psalm 1, verse 4, And the ungodly are not so. The ungodly are like chaff, which the wind drives away. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. They won't be able to. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly will perish. You see the difference there. 21 will be a year of difficulty for the world at large. But for the faithful brethren, it's going to be the year of fun. 21, the year of fun. Now let me say, I prophesied that in... 2018, I said, this around about this time in 2018, I said 2019, the Lord told me would be the year of nightmares. And it was. And then I prophesied in January 2019, I should say January 2020, I prophesied that the Lord said to me, this is going to be your year of plenty. And I tell you, it was for our house. The year of plenty. And now I'm prophesying 21, the year of fun. <laughs> Welcome to the house of fun. Welcome to the lion lamb. He's a lion lamb. I tell you now, he's a lion lamb. And then the Lord deconstructed the word fun and gave me more of a, an explanation of what he's meaning by 21, the year of fun. F-U-N. The F is for faith. Experiencing a whole new level of the power of faith. 21. I tell you what, it's already happening. And it's only November with Sister Sue 
Sister Elaine stepping out, stepping out there into a ministry house and, and just going to plough through there, casting out demonic forces. Oh, hallelujah. Eating McDonald's and walking on. <laughs> Come on now. Hey? Luke ten seventy and the the seventy return with joy, saying, "Lord, even the demons have subject are subject to us, but not to us, but to us in your name. It's in His name, isn't it? In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Twenty one, the year of fun. Twenty one, the year of faith." You're going to be amazed at what the Lord will do. You'll be shocked out of your socks what the Lord will do in 21. In the midst of a global crisis. In the midst of a crippled world. Hallelujah. Amen. (laughs) F-U-N. The U is is a whole new lease. A whole new lease of understanding. So we got faith. It's going to be a year of faith. It's going to be a year of understanding. Forward slash. Revelation. Forward slash. Insight. Fresh. Fresh. All the way. Satan has fallen. Remember it. Satan has fallen. You have authority over him. You have authority. You don't have to put up with the powers of darkness. You don't have to bow down to them and do the sin. You don't have to bow down and do what they say. Because you have authority given to you. For all authority was given to the Christ. And he has commissioned us to go and preach and teach and water baptize and everyone said. This is a long intermission I know. It's a long snack. But we'll get back to the message in a minute. I just want to unload this prophecy for 2021. The year of fun. The year of fight. The year of increased understanding. The year of increased insight and revelation. Amen. Amen. Praise His holy name. The name of Jesus. And the end. The end in fun. The Lord said is nourishment, nourishment. Nourishment relates to supply. It relates to stamina. It relates to strength and sustenance. Hey? And the serpent has no say in the matter. Nourishment. 21 will be the year of spiritual nourishment. And good shepherd provision. Amen. 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 We'll have all the supplies we need. All the strength we'll need. All the sustenance we need. In 2021. In the Christ, of course. By faith, obedience. Right? 2021, the year of fun, the year of faith, the year of understanding, the year of nourishment, the year of supply, the the, the year of strengthening in the Lord, the year of sustenance. Hey, that's 2021. We're going to come bursting out of the blocks. Hallelujah. Going to hit the ground running. Woo! Jesus, hallelujah, whoa, 2021, the year of fun, welcome to the house of fun, welcome to the lion lamb, oh glory, the righteous are as bold as lions, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We got the victory. Amen. And I'll tell you what, the cherry on the cake. Let's not forget the cherry on the cake. 
Hey? And the whipped cream. Hey? The natural whipped cream. That we will have an extreme joy in the inner man. Knowing that our name is written in heaven. You can't get better than that. You can't get better than that. Hey? Not that your name is written in Centrelink or Social Security. Your name is written in heaven. Amen. Amen. Your name is written in heaven. Amen. Talk about 21, the year of fun, the year of faith, the year of understanding, the year of nourishment, supply, strength, sustenance. Come on. Let's go back into the message today. Glory to the Lamb. Just think upon that. Go over that. Write it down. And you'll even see the, uh, the full prophecy on our Facebook. It'll be there on our Facebook. And you can go over it and over it and over it. Hey? We'll be built up in Christ. 21. And we see that all through the scriptures when the mud hit the fan and things got rough. I tell you what, the saints got going. They started to move into the substance that the Lord had given them, moving by faith in the Son of Man, in Jesus. Glory. So we're back in our message today, delight. And that was a delightful prophecy. It was fun, wasn't it, listening to that? I, I, I just got uplifted, listen, just revising that. I gave it to a couple of the brethren during the week and straight, straight away they mounted up with wings like eagles and texted me back and said, Oh, Pastor, I, I'm feeling this. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm receiving this. Glory to the Lamb. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed. Here we go. Blessed, heavenly, happy. These are fun people. Hey? Blessed means heavenly, happy. Blessed. You're having fun. Hey? Happiness, fun, joy. They're all related. They're in the one family. Blessed is the man and woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. We don't accept that sort of counsel. It has to be God's counsel. It has to be not the city council. It has to be God's counsel. It has to be thus says the Lord. Then you're going to be blessed. Then and then alone. Hallelujah. Then and then alone will you be blessed. When you are walking in the council, the full council of the Son of God who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners. There's no thought about it. There's no consideration for sin, is there? Eh? There's no consideration. When we fear the Lord and we love the Lord, we're not standing there considering whether we are going to sin or not. We're not even waiting around. We've bolted. We have fled. Amen. We've cleared out. We're gone. The moment the devil brings it on, we're gone. We're not standing around. We're not contemplating or considering. As soon as it's put to us, we're gone. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Amen. Amen. We're not waiting around for him to tell us what to do. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. And who are the scornful? The unbelievers. The unfaithful. The lukewarm. The compromisers. The religious. We don't sit in their seats. We don't go to a church that's compromising or lukewarm. We don't go to a church that's bogged down with the things of the world. We don't go to that sort of church and sit there. We're out of there. Hallelujah. 
we get out of there real quick. Because it's not going to be good for us, it's going to be bad for us. Because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And everyone said, Amen. a little leaven. Just a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Didn't say a lot, a little. So we've got to remember that it does count. It is important where you fellowship. It's important who you're in the boat with. So our message today, delight. Are we going to delight ourselves? Hey, we're going to delight ourselves? I can't help but delight myself. Can we just go to Psalm 37? Psalm 37, please. I can't help but delight myself. I'm in love. I'm in love. Psalm 37 and the verse is 4. He devises wicked, wickedness on his bed. He sets himself. Sorry. Psalm 37, 4, yeah. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. Sorry. <laughs> well, that, that goes with it too, doesn't it? That's the ungodly devising wicked plans on his bed and setting himself in a way that's not good. He does not abhor himself. Does not abhor evil, I should say. Psalm 37, 4 makes it clear, doesn't it? Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. If we delight ourselves, if we delight ourselves, in the Lord. Hey? And we're going to look at that word delight in a minute. We're going to deconstruct the word delight, but not yet. We've got a little ways to go yet. We're going to go to Psalm 40 now. Psalm 40. And the verse is 8. Psalm 40. And the verse is 8. I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. I delight to do your will. Come on. Is that our position today? This is King David speaking here. I delight to do your will. How many people I talk to every day. For the last 33 years on the street, I talk to them. They don't delight in doing the Lord's will. Because they tell me how much they love the world, how much they love their sin. The Lord's not on their mind. The only thing they've got on their mind is sin. They're always talking about sin. But when you delight to do His will, when you want... You know, when you delight, some people really like to eat ice cream, you know. I'm not really an ice cream man. I bought my wife an ice cream the other day and it was a, a real fancy ice cream. And she just really delighted in it. You know, you can see she's just saying, wow, wow, that's a nice ice cream. From one of those specialty ice cream shops, you know. And she was delighted in it. She was really delighting in herself. And I could see that. But when I come across church people today, I tell you what, it's not going to be good for them in 2021. Because they're not delighting themselves in the Lord. Because you mention certain scriptures and they just don't want to hear about it. It's just like as if it's following the Lord Jesus. It's such a bother. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just asking so much. 
But the Lord's not asking anything. The Lord's telling you, follow me. That's all He's telling you. He's not asking you to do the impossible. He's asking you to do the, the possible. And then, He's the one that's going to do the impossible. He's going to do the possible. So when someone delights in the Lord, it's not all, oh, the devil. You know, the devil, the devil. He's trying to do this. He's trying to take me out. But he can't take you out. He can't take you out because we just heard it before in the writings of Luke 10, 17 to 20. And I also like what it says in Luke 10, 21. Can we go there? Let's go to Luke 10, 21. It just tops it all off. Luke 10, 21. It enhances everything I said here this morning. Luke 10, 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and reveal them to babes. Even so, Father... For so it seemed good in your sight. You see that? He hides it from the wise. He hides the simplicity and the profound simplicity of his word from the so-called wise and the prudent and those who think I'm this and I'm that. And it, it's his pleasure to reveal it to the bones, to reveal it to the humble when the Lord talks about babes, He talks about humble. Unless you become like a child. Unless you become humble like a child. Unless you humble yourself like a child. Unless you be converted from your high-mindedness. Amen? Unless you be converted. How in the world are you going to be able to enter the kingdom... How in the world are you going to receive? Hey? Eh? How are you going to receive what the Lord's saying? How are you going to get the understanding and the insight? How are you going to get it? You're not going to give it. You give it to the babes. You give it to the humble. You give it to those who faithfully follow Him. He show Himself strong on their behalf in 21. His eyes go to and fro across the earth, seeking whom he may show himself strong. Amen? Amen. On their behalf. Looking for the loyal. He's looking for the faithful. Can you say amen? amen. Hey? So that's a beautiful finishing touch. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven. So much for the wonders. He didn't say, I praise me. I praise me, me. Lord of heaven. That's just garbage. Oneness, teaching. Modelism, total garbage. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you, not me, Jesus wasn't saying that me. He said, no, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and reveal them to babe. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. He didn't say in my sight. He said in your sight. So it's not oneness, is it? Everyone said? Amen. And amen and amen. Come on. Amen. We're going to yield. We got, we're on the deed. We're respecting the Lord. We're fearing the Lord. We're loving the Lord. We're on the D. Uh, delight. That's the last letter in, in, in the word yield. Let's turn in our Bibles to Psalm 119. Point. Psalm 119. Got a lot of verses there, haven't we? Psalm 119. Glory. We've got to delight ourselves. That's, that's the new covenant manifested, delighting yourself in the Lord. That's to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. 
Psalm 119. Hallelujah. And the verse is 92. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. You see that? Unless your law, unless your way, unless your law had been my delight, and that's why a lot of people perish. A lot of people go down. Depression, mental uh, illness, all kinds of sickness. Physically and mentally. Because their delight wasn't in the Lord's way. If you delight yourself in the Lord, He's going to back you up. The Lord's going to be there. In the good times and the bad. Right? If we fear the Lord. If we delight ourselves. We delight ourselves in the Lord. And rejoice in the Lord. Isaiah 55 too. What does it say? Isaiah 55. And the verse is. Isaiah 55. And the verse is 2. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me. And eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. That's in the next verse. But it's good to read that little bit. This is talking of the spiritual here. In verse 2, why do you spend money for what is not bread? The invitation to abundance. Invitation to faith, understanding and nourishment. Amen? Why do you spend money for what is not bread? Your wages for what does not satisfy. And that's the world, isn't it? That's the world and the way of the world. They spend their money on things that's not going to fill them up. I know when I was an alcoholic, I was never ever satisfied. A hundred beers was not enough. And one was too many. Never satisfied. But I'd spend all my money on drugs, nicotine, alcohol... Never, never full. Never could have my thirst quenched until I started drinking the true wine from the true vine. The Word of God. Living waters. Abundant water. Abundant life. There's a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens the prison doors and sets the captive free. There's a river of life flowing out of me. And everyone said amen. 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 Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? That's why you got... The Rolling Stones and Mick Jagger saying, I can't get no satisfaction. But I tried and I tried. But I can't get no satisfaction. Well, I tried and I tried and I tried. tried. Listen diligently to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight. Itself in abundance. Eat what is good. Eat the good news. Eat the good news. And let your soul 
<coughs> let your mind, your will, your emotions delight. Let your soul delight itself in the abundance that comes from the bread that came from heaven. The bread of life. Not the bread that was in the wilderness, but the bread of life. The bread of life he is to men. Some call him Lord and some call him King, but unto me I call him friend. His name is Jesus. His name is Wonderful. His name is Counselor. His name is Prince of Peace. His name is Mighty God. His name is above every name. The mention of His name. Every knee will bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. Your mind, your will and your emotions. Everything will be turned around. You won't be that troubled person. You won't be getting bogged down all the time with what's going on in the world. Conspiracy theories will fly out the door and you'll know and have understanding and revelation and insight that conspiracy theories are flawed. I don't care who they say they are. I don't care what they are. They're flawed, flawed, flawed and not pure. Stay away. From conspiracy theories. They're flawed. They've got a human mix. And it's usually playing out for the proclaimer of the conspiracy. But the word of God is pure. The word of God is pure and proven like silver in a furnace. Seven times, infallible, absolute, ultimatum, the greatest, the way, the truth, the life. Keep it simple. Don't be deterred from the road called narrow. If you gave your life to Jesus, give your life to Jesus. Let it be him that's your only husband. Let it be him. Not some conspiracy theory. Not some garbage religion with their Krispy Kremes and jumping castles. Let them have the entertainment. We'll stick with the abundant life of the living word. The Lord Jesus the Christ. And everyone said, Hallelujah! 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 Praise you Jesus. I'm going to start preaching in a minute. Just getting warmed up. (laughs) Woo! Jesus! Ah! Ah! Glory! Thank you, Lord. Okay. Let's go into the message today. We're going to deconstruct the word delight. Delight. We delight ourselves in the Lord. Oh, praise you, Jesus. The benefits, begetting delight. Oh, make a good message, that one, wouldn't it? The benefits, begetting delight. I'm a poet and I don't even know it. But all prophets are poets, but not all poets are prophets. Are you understanding me? I'm getting confused. No, I'm not. I'm not confused. I'm just being used of the Lord. Welcome to the house of fun. The house of faith. The house of understanding. The house of nourishment. Strengthening. Hallelujah. Sustain. Only the word can sustain us in these days. Only the word. Only the word of the Lord is able to strengthen us, sustain us and establish us. 
in this day and age. Nothing else can do the job. Not psychologists, psychiatrists. Do you got mental issues? You've got to go to Messiah. Messiah is the master of the mind. <laughs> Messiah is the master of the mind. We've got to go to him and receive of him. Because he will give you that spirit of sanity. The spirit of sanity. The religious hypocrites don't preach that. They say it's okay to go to psychologists. No, I say it's not. Stay away. You'll end up a, a, a fruit loop, a loony tune. Stay away from psychologists. Stay away from psychiatrists. Stay away from those who think they know the mind and they haven't even got their own mind sorted out in their own life. They're not even born again. They're still born of their mother who was a sinner and they're sinners and they practice sin and they don't think clearly and they don't have lucid thinking. So why go there? They're no better off than you. So let's read it. Let's go to the writings of Timothy, please. Scripture to the brethren, please. Let's go to the writings of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. What does it say? <laughs> what does it say, John? I'll tell you, Bill. 2 Timothy 1 and the verse is 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound. And a sound. And a sound. I like the sound of that. And a sound. Much better than the sound of music. And a sound. Mine. I like that. Don't you like that? Say amen. I like that. Whoa. Love. Power. And a sound. Mine. That's I right. Look. We're able to recommend every man and woman on earth to the great physician. You might be a wounded soldier, but you can't leave the fight because the great physician is healing me. Oh, hallelujah. Amen? Come on. You might say, oh, well, you know. But I'm going to say, hallelujah! Hallelujah. Woo! I'm going to start having my fun now. I'm not waiting for 21 to have fun. I'm going to walk by faith now. I'm going to call on the Lord for more understanding, insight and revelation now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because faith takes. Faith doesn't ask. It takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We take that victory. Oh, she mother asunder. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, son of David. Jesus. Woo! Oh, nourish me, Lord. <laughs> nourish me in these days of weak men and weak women. Nourish me, strengthen me, use me, sustain me. Oh, Lord, guide me, lead me. Jesus, name I pray, Father. Everyone said. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Davidical son. So let's go into uh, the writings of Luke, shall we? And we'll start the message today. <laughs> We're going to read out of the writings of Luke 17. Luke 17 and the verse will be 10. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty. We have done what is our duty to do. Amen? <laughs> you see that? Our duty is our delight. As a good soldier... I 
delighted when I was a soldier in the Australian Army, I delighted in doing my duty. When I was under the authority of that battalion, I delighted in it. I, I, I specialised in it. Like Sister, Sister Shana's dad, he's a military man of all. Far more military man than my experience. But he delighted. He, he delighted in that. He delighted in being organised. He delighted in, in discipline. He delighted in that. And when you delight in something, you become good at it. If you delight in thieving and lying and cheating, you're going to become good at it. You're going to be able to deceive the most undeceivable. <laughs> but the day will come when you run across someone you won't be able to deceive. And then the penny will drop. So that's why we must live a good, honest life. So likewise, the D in delight is for duty. We have a duty. We have a call of duty. A duty of honour. When we come to the Lord and we join the army of the Lord. Amen? Amen. When we join the army of the Lord. God's got an army marching through the land. Deliverance is their song with healing in their hand, with everlasting joy and gladness in their heart. And in this army we have got a part. Yes, God's got an army marching through the land. Deliverance is their song with healing in their hand, with everlasting joy and gladness in their heart. And in this army we have got a part. Amen. We joined an army. We didn't join some girl guides. <laughs> we didn't join the girl guides. Can we go to Timothy, please? Writing to Timothy. <coughs> our duty is our delight. We delight ourselves in that. Eh? We delight ourselves. Let's go to, to Timothy, please. To Timothy 2. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things which you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who lives in him as a soldier. You see that? And when I was a soldier in the Australian Army, I went out of my way to please my commanding officer. I went out of my way to put my part and my effort in to make my platoon a, a top platoon. I was always in the top ten, always in the top ten in my platoon, always. And I delighted in it. I loved it. I loved the physical work. I loved the weapons training. I, I, I just loved the communing and, and, and the brotherhood in the army. I, I loved the, uh, the whole setup. I delighted in it. That's why I became good at it. Super fit, super aware, and the same in the Lord's army. I'm, I'm the same, I take the same attitude. It's all or none. It's all or none. When I joined the Australian army, I forgot all about my old friends and the guys I grew up riding motorcycles and hung out with all my life. I just forgot them, forget them. I'm here to do a job. And I wanted to be a top soldier. And that's the same in the army of the Lord. We have to delight ourselves in the Lord. We have to delight ourselves to the point where uh, it says here in the writings of 2 Timothy 2, verse 4, No one engaged in warfare entangles themselves with the affairs 
of this life. And you see them all on the, on the internet entangling themselves with politics and the, the affairs of this life. They're arguing and they're fighting against each other and it's all about the world and the things that are going on in the world and their life with the Christ, if they've got any, is neglected. And if we neglect so great an army, we, if we neglect so great, that's Hebrews 2, 3. Hebrews 2, 3. Chapter 2. We neglect so great a salvation, so great a master, so great a, a God. We neglect Him and we get all bogged down with superstition and, and, and all these conspiracy theories and history and what went on in, in, in the year dot. Who gives a rat what went on 110 years ago. It doesn't, it's got no bearing on your salvation. While well, you're living in sin and bogged down in history and everything else on the internet, the Lord Jesus goes to waste. He's not happy about that. He's grieved. He don't want you spending the majority of your time doing anything else. He wants to be number one day and night. Night and day. He wants to be preeminent. He wants the biggest slice of the cake, if not the whole cake. <laughs> Amen? Amen? He don't want you putting your wife on his level. My wife is not on Jesus' level. She's not my number one. Jesus is my number one. My children aren't my number one. Jesus is. The congregation aren't my number one. Jesus is. Amen? Amen. Glory to the Lamb. We've got to remember that. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords, not the manager of Kmart. Amen? <laughs> Get the priorities right, and then we'll be able to shine the light with might in the sight of all who are called. Amen? Amen? So here we are. We're in Psalm 1 today, verses 1 and 2. We're looking at our call to duty. To his two delight. Right? It's our duty of honour. We've got to honour the Lord. We've got to respect the Lord. We've got to fear the Lord. Walk in that victory. I just go back and read that. In Luke 17. Let's go back there, verse 10. Luke 17, 10. So likewise you, when you have done all these things which he has commanded you. Right? That's the basics. After you've done everything. After you have done everything, he said. Most people don't even do any of it. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't done half of it. Have you done all he commanded? Amen? Amen. After you done all that he commanded. Then and only then are you going to receive of the blessings? Are you going to lock into the house of fun? Are you going to walk in that uh, faith level he's called you to and the understanding, revelation inspiration Amen, Amen. Luke seventeen ten. so likewise when you have done all those things which he has commanded you we say this we are unprofitable servants we have done what was our delight what was our duty to do that's the new covenant. To love him first. And to do what he says is to love him first. And foremost. Amen? Amen. Delight. Then we got an E. D-E-L-I-G-H-T. The E. Let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. Glory to the Lamb, right? Eh? Uh, 
Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. Though the fig tree may not blossom nor fruit beyond the vines, though the labour of the old may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock be cut off from the fall, and there be no herd in the storm, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet. He will make me walk on my high hills. Amen. Hey? Amen. You see the energy there? Not high hills. On my high hills. We're not down in Darlinghurst. Amen. <laughs> We're not in the all inclusive uh, Hillsong uh, all inclusive LGBTQ church. No high hills here. Amen. Amen. Only high hills to climb. And we're just springing off them all over the place, bouncing around like a rubber ball of bouncing back to you. So here we are in the E. Energy, energy. I, I know that sounds a little bit New Age ish. But that's where I get all my strength and energy from. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of knowing the Lord is my strength. Hey? I delight in that. I delight in that I know Him. I understand Him. I don't delight in anything else. Because anything else and everything else can fail me. But He can never fail me. Unless I fail Him, He stays faithful. He's a, he is always faithful to His Word. If we live beyond His Word, He can't back us up. If we live beyond His Word. As we see in Psalm 1. Psalm 1 tells you, godly, ungodly. The godly, they live according to His way. The ungodly, they don't live according to His way. They will perish. Amen? Amen. They will fall to pieces. Everything will crumble. They'll be like the man and the woman who build their life on the sand. The sand is any other way or knowledge or understanding or teaching other than Jesus. That's sand. I don't care if it's Jehovah Witness. I don't care if it's Seven Day Adventist, Eight Day Adventist, Oneness, Modelism, Once Saved, Always Saved, Baptist, Hell Song, Hill Song, any other teaching outside. Of Jesus' teaching is sand. It's sand. It's not solid. All around is sinking sand. But on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Habakkuk, the prophet Habakkuk. The fig tree may not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vine. The flock be cut off from the fall, and there be no herd in the store. Yes! Yeah! I will rejoice in the Lord. Yeah, I will rejoice in the Lord because the Lord thy God is my salvation. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I joy. I rise up with joy. I rise up. My life has become fun. My life has become a life of faith. My life has become a life of understanding and revelation and insight. My life has become a life of Vitality and, and nutrition and nourishment and strength. Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ has provided that for his faithful and the loyal. Hallelujah. Like Habakkuk said very clearly, though nothing is happening, I'm still standing, I'm still rejoicing, I'm nourished in the love and joy of my God and Saviour. Hallelujah. Jesus the Christ. And everybody said, 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 everybody said, said, Amen. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to start preaching in a minute. I'm just getting warmed up. I'm just getting warmed up there. Woo. Whoa. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ, in Christ, by the power of His Spirit, by the power, by the leading of His Word. Because what he wor- His Word says is, 
God said in the beginning in Genesis, let there be light. He said it four times. No, he never. He said it once. He said it once. Once. Not twice. Not three times. Let there be light and there was. He said repent and you'll be forgiven. Once. Just once. He said follow me and I'll lead you there. If you get off the road, you're no longer following him. You won't get there. (laughs) You won't get there. You'll end up in hell. You'll end up on the highway to hell. Highway to hell. You won't end up on the highway of holiness. You won't be saying, I'm travelling the highway of holiness. And it says the unclean won't touch the signs. And if a man walks this road... He'll look foolish in the eyes of a modern world and a modern family. But he will never go astray because there'll be no lion or beast upon this road. Because it's for the redeem. You know that? That devil can't even touch that road. It's for the redeem. The devil ain't on that road. He's on the side of the road. The demons are on the side of the road. Like that black puma, you know, the wow, wow. On the side of the road. Wow, wow. Trying to stop you from going forward. You just go poof, poof. Just pump that one, poof. Just a quick jab on each side of the road. Look not to the left. Ah! Look not to the right. Ah! But look ahead. Ah! Look up. Ah! You will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in. <laughs> oh, glory to the Lamb, eh? I love Habakkuk. I just love that attitude. That's a real prophet's attitude, you know. Down to the bone. Just straight on down to the rubberies. Nothing left. No money, nothing. There's nothing coming in there. Ain't nothing happening. He can't see anything. But he, the prophet Habakkuk, he said, My joy's got nothing to do with what I see. My joy. Ha! Habakkuk said, My My joy comes from, my joy comes from knowing Him, the great I am, yes. His joy wasn't coming from what He's seen. Oh, look at my car. Oh, look at my money. Oh, stack it up. Oh, look at my friends. I can't count them. There's so many. No, Habakkuk said there was nothing. The fig tree wasn't blossoming. The fruit was not on the vine. The flock was cut off from the fall. There was no herd in the store. The product of the olive had failed. Oh, look. It was even looking like the product of the olive had fallen. In other words, there wasn't even any anointing. It was seemingly that way. But the Lord was with him. He said the joy of knowing him. Everything he captured in him, everything. I don't care if it was herd. I don't care if it was meat. I don't care if it was olives. I don't care if it was oil. I don't care what it was. He, he said, I got it all anyway in him and more. Amen? Amen? We got it all in him. We got it all in the Lord. He is my everything. He is my, my everything. He is my own. He is my everything. 
both great and small. And then he also said that because of his love for the Lord and he joyed out on knowing him, he'd be just dancing round. He'd be just dancing round there like a deer on the, on the hills, on the mountains. Oh, yeah. When the enemy comes, he was ready. Oh, let's go, my man. I'm here. Bring it. Woo! He just dancing around there. Oh, yes. Yes, I got this. Ah! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he was dancing like David danced. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, son of David. Let's go into the message today. Hallelujah. We're going to go into the owl. (laughs) This is a hard one. In delight, D-E-L-I-G-H-T. Welcome to the house of fun. We're going to open our Bibles in James. James, James. Hold the ladder steady, James, James. Oh, dear me. Oh, I'm having such fun today. Hey? Having such fun. I'm just fun doubt. Faith doubt, understanding doubt, nourish doubt. <laughs> oh dear, I tell you, this beats stinking religion, doesn't it? Doesn't these meetings beat some stinking religion that you get down the road there? When you're tired, did you, did you pay your tithe? Did you pay your tithe, 10%? Where's your tithe? We're going to go to James chapter 1. And the verse is 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let everyone delight in the Lord. Let everyone, let every man and woman be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not and cannot produce the righteousness of God. You see that, Al? That... Alan, delight, when you delight yourself in the Lord, you're not the big know-all, know-nothing. You're not a big know-all. Amen? Oh, my name's big know-all and I know nothing. Verse 19, James 1, So then, my beloved brethren, let everyone be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to write, swift to listen. Listen, be swift to listen, quick to listen. That's how we learn, that's how we yearn. If you yearn for the Lord, you want to listen, don't you? What about Mary and Martha? Where was Mary? She was at his feet, wasn't she? She was a listener. Mary was a listener. Martha, oh, she was in the kitchen, whinging, hey? When she could have been listening. As she was watching the dishes. She could have been listening to what was going on with Mary and Jesus, you know. But she wasn't. She's whinging. And all the whinging and the complaining drowned out what the Lord was saying at Mary at his feet. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. Do you want to know a secret? Do you promise to tell everyone closer? Are we going to listen? Are we going to listen to the Lord? How many times are we going to say to our children, I told you, didn't I? But you wouldn't listen. <laughs> you wouldn't listen to me. I tried to tell you. I told you before. I told you before. You can't do that. If we'll only listen. I know that because when I was without Christ in the world, alien of the Commonwealth of Israel, of God and I was in the world I wouldn't listen my mother told me my dad told me my family told me I just keep going ahead full steam ahead you know like an old steam train straight into the pit all the time trouble after trouble wouldn't listen I was just like a fool who repeated their folly but the Lord said I can take the fool because they know they're a fool and I can use them and they'll know that it's not them, that it's me. And I'll get the glory and they won't because they're known as the fool. Amen? Amen. We've got to delight. We've got to delight. 
Delight. D E L. If you delight in the Lord, you listen. 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 What does it say in the writings of Acts? Chapter 3. Can we go there, please? Acts chapter 3. Oh, Sister Caroline is enjoying herself there today. I've seen a few smiles there for a while. Hallelujah. Rendering a smile here and there. But only here and there. Uh, Acts. <laughs> Acts 3. Oh, Jesus. Acts 3 in the verses, 23. And it shall come to pass that every soul who will not listen to that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Moses was talking about the great prophet Jesus. The great prophet Jesus. That's who I got and get my prophecies from. I get them from the senior prophet. I get them from the great, great prophet. God, the great prophet. Jesus, the great prophet. If you don't listen to him, we don't listen to the great prophet, he'll utterly destroy you. You don't want to hear? They're my brother. They're my sister. They're my mother who hear the word of God and do it. You see that? We don't delight ourselves in the Lord. I love today. It's a lovely day. It's a fun day. It's a faith day. It's an understanding day. It's a nourishing day. It's a strengthening day. It's a sustaining day. It, it, it's a saviour day. It's a sweet day. <laughs> We're eating the fat and eat, eating the sweet, eh? All because of Jesus, the Christ. We're going to go on next week <coughs> with delight. See what we can find there. Finish off the deconstruction of the word delight as we fear the Lord. We go forward this week fearing the Lord and rejoicing in the Lord with all our heart, soul, strength and mind. Loving our neighbour as we love ourselves. Are you going to buy sausages? For, you, for your neighbour? You buy sausages for yourself. Are you going to buy barramundi? For yourself, you buy a barrel of money for your neighbour. That's loving your neighbour as you love yourself. Amen? Amen. You're going to buy your shoes at Williams? You make sure you buy your neighbour Williams shoe. Amen? amen. Everyone said amen. I know, oh, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs>